Um, so, hello, uh, my name is Reed Black. I'm a full stack developer. I just three weeks ago graduated from the galvanized full stack web development immersive. And um, I had the brilliant uh, idea to do my capstone project in Vue Native, which at the time was about three weeks old. Um, it was definitely a trying experience, uh, but once I started to kind of get over the hump and figure out what was unique about it, uh, what was unique about that framework, uh, I found it really rewarding uh, and even fun, and fun uh, to work in as well. Um, so before I go any further, a word from my sponsor, um, which is my unemployment. Without being unemployed, I probably would have had time to speak today, so uh, if anyone would like to help me change that, it would be much appreciated. Um, so a little bit about the, setting the stage for how Vue Native was created. Uh, think like Sybaris, you know, like a little bit of uh, Marvin Gaye playing, uh, and then you have uh, Vue and React Native uh, have uh, come into come into the scene there. So basically, it is a um, it is a combination of the two. And uh, working in Vue Native is a lot like working in Vue, uh, in, like working in Vue, uh, but while being bound by your ankles, hung upside down, and beaten with reeds only to wake up, realize it was all a dream, and you were React Native the whole time. So uh, the first thing um, you'll want to do, if you've never uh, built an app with React Native, is get uh, an app called Expo. So um, you'll go to expo.io, you'll want to create an account. What Expo does uh, is it basically handles your native environment for you. So you can uh, simulate uh, the native environment either on uh, an iOS sim simulator on your computer or load it directly onto your phone. Um, so that is, uh, in, my, in my experience, really key to getting it going. Um, you'll have to install globally both the Vue Native CLI and the React Native app. Uh, and then just like you'll just do view native init and then the name of your project, uh, yarn start, and then uh, you'll be able to cap capture the uh, QR code, which will show up right on your CLI. Scan that with your uh, phone's camera, and that will uh, pull the app right up on your phone. So when you uh, do view init, um, when you do view native init, it's going to create this. Uh, let's zoom in here so you can see what's going on. This is what it will, uh, this is the boilerplate that it will bring up for you. It's just a white screen that will show up on your phone. It says my uh, view native app. Uh, it is a single view, uh, view component that just says app.view. Uh, in my experience, this was not a very uh, easy way to start because navigating in view native is absolutely nothing like navigating in view, which is kind of the main uh, difficulty that I encountered right off the bat. Uh, so, uh, really getting started, what I found the best thing was to do uh, is I went to uh, Geeky Ants, uh, who is the group that created Vue Native. Uh, they also created, did a native base for React Native, so they do all the, the uh, architectural components uh, that you can import right into your project. Uh, so, they have a kitchen sink app, uh, which is a really great way to kind of uh, get yourself situated with uh, what's what in that, uh, in that framework. So, what I did, uh, to really kind of learn and learn my way around was uh, to open up the, uh, to pretty much clone the repo, uh, open it up in, in a code editor, and then start my new project, and then kind of copy paste over uh, some of the uh, components as well as the uh, architecture with which they use to set up their app. Uh, so I'll show you guys what that looks like a little bit just so you have a frame of reference. Uh, Okay, so that's a drawer opening up, which I'll talk about a little bit uh, when I speak about navigators. But now you see what I mean, just all the different components that you would need to use uh, in a native application are right there. So by um, pretty much copy and pasting over what you need and then uh, customizing it for your own purposes, find that to be a very uh, efficient way to get uh, a native app up and running with Vue Native. Uh, let's see here. So uh, a, few, uh, a few differences to look out for. Uh, our style properties, uh, styling uh, in React Native, I'll call it, um, or Vue Native, uh, there are only so many properties, properties that it will allow. And that was one of the most difficult uh, challenges that I encountered. Uh, a lot of, like, uh, if you wanted to do a uh, shadow, you have to pretty much um, go through in a, just like three different types of properties just to get something that in normal CSS you could do uh, with a one off. Uh, when you are linking a source, You'll want to use uh, this uh, syntax right here. You'll bind your source uh, in quotations, then curly braces, and you need to do URI 
uh, colon, and then the, um, the source to the actual image. Um, I'll talk a little bit more about JSX in Vue Native as well. Uh, and you'll be, whenever you're in JSX within Vue Native, this is how you, this is the syntax you would use uh, to link an image. Uh, so Vue Native Router is uh, essentially nothing like the Vue Router you would use uh, in Vue. It is um, essentially it's React Navigator, React Navigator, uh, or React Navigation. I haven't really used it, so yeah, I think it's React Navigation. Um, so it's a little bit difficult to use at first. Once you get the hang of it, it's awesome. Uh, because you can use it to uh, pass props horizontally to sibling components. So wherever you're navigating, uh, you can use the view router to attach your props and then send them to any like dynamically loaded component um, that way, which is uh, really helpful to learn and it's not very uh, evident in the view native docs. So uh, I will put these uh, slides up on the uh, Dem for Devs view, um, view channel so you guys can take a look. Um, so let's see the different types. There's a stack navigator, which we, you can use to navigate to any location in your app. There's the drawer navigator, which slides open a drawer and um, will have different, uh, an array of different uh, locations that you can, screens that you can move to from there. Uh, and then the go back function will simply just go back to whatever the previous screen uh, you visited was. Uh, so now on to uh, integrating React Native libraries. Uh, the use case, I'm going to do uh, React Native Deck Swiper, uh, which is a, uh, stack, a stack of cards, much like in uh, Tinder or Bumble, any of the dating apps where you swipe left and right on uh, potential suitors, if you will. I'll show you how uh, I integrated that library uh, into Vue Native. So this is what it looks like in, uh, this is what the JSX uh, in, in the React Native Deck Swiper docs looks like. I'm actually going to go ahead and show you what it looks like in basically this kind of thing, just in case you need a little visual uh, of what it's doing. So um, this is JSX if you're not familiar with React. It's uh, basically a function that returns um, uh, a section of HTML. Um, what you need to do when you're bringing it into Vue Native is basically uh, put the, uh, the main component in your template and wherever you see JSX, uh, wherever you see uh, another uh, return segment of HTML uh, within that, uh, that is where you basically link it down to your methods uh, and call it that way. So uh, I'm going to show you guys what this looked like in Vue Native. Uh, so Basically, on our swiper, we're going to use the same uh, props that are available in the React Native component, but we'll bind them the same way you're used to in Vue. Uh, you can see the, uh, I did vif cards. This is kind of like an if scenario. You wouldn't need to do this because I'm not dynamically loading uh, these cards here. Uh, but if you were like, you know, doing an Ajax request to get those, you would want to do vif. Um, Vue Native is incredibly sensitive to uh, asynchronicity, so uh, VF to make sure that that data is loaded uh, is a really a good uh, strategy there. Uh, so render cards right here. Okay, for, sorry, getting ahead of myself. So cards uh, would be where your data lives. So basically, I'm referencing my data as you know it in Vue. Um, render card. This is where it gets a little bit tricky, uh, but if you if you've done it once, it's really easy every time thereafter. Uh, so you basically just bind um, the uh, bind the prop, uh, and then you reference the function down in, down here in your methods, and then you do it exactly like JSX in React. So um, once you've done that, all rules of view are off in in that method. You're going to just use if you if you have a question about syntax or anything like that. Don't even bother looking at view documentation. Like at that point, just go into React Native documentation. Um, so at that point, uh, you can't really do a V4, for instance, to uh, dynamically load individual cards because React Native uh, libraries don't understand V4. So you basically have to dynamically load those components the way that they would be done in React. So that's the kind of, that's the point at which you would break from the view way of doing things and enter the React way of doing things. Uh, so uh, I'm going to pretty much call it um, and open it up for questions. Um, my GitHub is right here. You're free. To, feel free to poke around uh, the name of the project that I uh, 
did uh, use it for view native is called Inkswell. Uh, so, uh, and also if anyone has a view native project, they just want to ask any questions, I'm happy to like help out or help you debug. So uh, thanks again. Yes, sir. Yeah, I had a question. Under the coverage, uh, do you know is it using, like on an Android, is it using the Android native components or is it using the web view? Um, you know, the, the native base is going to work for uh, iOS or Android. Um, so they'll have the same, same look? Mm -hmm. There are a lot of warnings. One thing I'll say, like my knowledge of uh, being able to answer that question is fairly limited since I haven't developed for Android. This is the one, this is the one native app I've ever made. Uh, and I did it, I, I was um, testing it in iOS. Uh, but in theory, it should work in Android as well. I got a lot of warnings. Uh, from a lot of React Native libraries that I used, uh, saying that Android is very touchy and that like you, it might this component might load in iOS and it might error out with Android. Yeah, it's, it's an ORM on top of another ORM. It's like you're using this to communicate to React, and then React communicates to Java through what Android uses. So it's kind of a weird. Yes, sir. Uh, you mentioned that like you can't, uh, for instance, <laughs> reform. Um, if you make it, are there any? Is there any other aspect with like the view native that maybe for good or bad, like you notice was very different than uh, like you were telling someone who was just about to dive into view native, like, hey, be careful with these things here or whatever. Um, well, I would just say I would just say treat it like view at first until you run into a brick wall and just like know right away that that's your that's your cue to look into the React Native documentation. Uh, and if you're using a li if you're using a library that's made for React, it's not gonna it's not gonna cooperate with view directives. <clears throat> it's not gonna know like how to handle that. It's just I mean maybe there's a way to hack it in, but it's probably much more of a workaround than actually just kind of breaking from you and, and, and just like, you know, sending JSX into your methods, that kind of thing, so. Gotcha. Yeah. So you can still use V4s, it's just you can't use it with this library. Exactly, you can, yeah. V4 <laughs> still works, like, all, like all those directives still work, uh, but they're a lot more picky when you're using, like a, bringing in a library, that's, that's one of the issues. Uh, because you might want to, you have to basically go a completely different route to dynamically load uh, either your data or uh, dynamically load um, Whole components. And uh, I noticed at the beginning you used uh, yarn. Is that a personal preference or a like something that is uh, npm just wasn't working? It says npm install on uh, their docs. Um, Keith, did you have issues with npm as well when you were doing it? Oh, you did. Okay. Yeah, personal preference. <laughs> 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 Let's just call it ignorance, being bliss, uh, in that sense. Good question. Uh, I guess it's kind of weird to me that you have to do a lot of this JSX React stuff. And I know that it seems like the view, the native script thing is kind of come along. Do you think it's worth it to program kind of React in view in order to use React Native? Or? I will say my experience was this. I just kind of like plunged in uh, sort of ignorant to like view native versus um, Native script, um, and I am grateful that it's because I I've never even used React before mm -hmm. uh, before I did this uh, before I did this um, capstone project, and that was my foray into uh, understanding a lot of React. So it gave me an opportunity to learn React. So I think that was my benefit. Uh, if you don't, if you aren't looking for the benefit, that same benefit, I don't think that you know, I, I wouldn't say that I would have a preference of one or the other. I didn't mind it once I got used to it, but I know it looks dirty if you're used to it. <laughs> well, yeah, that's the thing is like, I think you're gonna find a lot less like resources for using both, and I think it's almost like from two perspectives in a one code, it's harder to build your code because you're doing two different types yeah. of frameworks, so you're not only is it take longer, it's like that your error messages might be more cryptic because you can bring the view to React. And number two, it's like you're just use, if you're using React in you, then you just use React. Period. I'm not going to argue with that. Yeah. What I will say um, is that uh, little uh, moments uh, in my pro short programming life have been as like 
uh, had a strong feeling of like accomplishment and like like breaking through on something that like finally get like so there was no documentation at the time on how to do it so it was like it, it felt really good to like oh my god I, I just like you took these two different frameworks and like put them together and like it did the thing like uh, but it's I mean you're right there is like you have to kind of ask yourself at, certain, at a certain point like how practical is, is this really like should I just be doing React Native at this point yeah, yeah. I guess like a POC, it's kind of impressive, but I think from like a sustainability perspective, <laughs> to like work on apps, you know, right. like, I mean, it would drive me nuts. I'd rather be flipping between the two and mm -hmm. making the Frankenstein. And, yeah, you know, it drove me nuts for like five days, and then after that, I was like chilling. So, okay. Yeah. I think I think it's gonna win a few, but I know they're not on the website. They do JS apps, so but I think it's like <laughs> you right. are framed where you should assign on your own. Exactly. Right. And I, yeah. If you're gonna need what React does. I, just I think that's that's definitely a valid argument. Marlena, how are we on time? We're done. Thank okay. you. Cool.